Math 43 had a question coming out of chapter 9, number 77, and here we were given some information about uh, the time spent to complete an undergrad degree in the CSU system, and things that I start to notice here is I see this number of four and a half, and I see the word years, and average, so that's my first clue that I'm in mean land, because I see the word average, Right, and then I see some units on my variable. So my variable here is the, the time spent to complete an undergrad degree. So time spent to complete undergrad degree. Right, in a CSU system. But I also see that my units are years. And anytime I have units, that's another clue that I have a numerical variable. And again, this is just saying, well, I'm in mean land. And that's a good thing to realize, like, because you have to either be in mean land or proportion land, I'm in mean land. And you can see, that here's another clue, right? That if I look at the next sentence, it says, suppose that you believe the mean time is longer. So there's another clue that I'm in mean land. And I can also then see there's my sample size, right, of 49 students. So I know I'm on a sampling distribution. I've got a statistic of 5.1 for the mean and another statistic of 1.2 for the standard deviation. And these, even though they don't say it, the units here on both of these are years because every statistic has the same units as your variable. So do data support the claim at the 1% level? Let's start off with our 13 steps, and I've, I've listed them out here. So for step one, we're going to see me, uh, I'm going to define my parameter mu. So this is going to be the true average time spent to complete an undergrad degree in the CSU system. And the units here are years. All right. And so there's this, this article that says that the average is four and a half years. So that is the claim that my mean is four and a half years against the alternate. Right. And it says you believe the mean time is longer. Whoops. I don't need to write HA again. So mu is greater than 4.5 years. All right. So things that I want to just point out real quick, anytime you have your null and your alternate, you need colons right after them. This symbol, whether it's the null or alternate, it should be a parameter. It should be whatever you defined in step one. So in this case, it's mu, and it should be in both a null and alternate. And that number, 4.5, it should be the same number in the um, null and alternate. The only thing that really changes from null to alternate is this symbol. So we went from the equal sign to the greater than sign. All right, I'm going to undo all of my shading because it gets a little crowded. All right, so step four, and I've listed all the steps here. Oh, I thought I had the assumptions somewhere, but um, they went missing. Well, I'll write them out anyways. So we've done step one, two, three. So for four, I want the alpha. They gave it to us this time. So I've got an alpha of 1%. So they're lowering the uh, alpha from 5%, the standard to 1%. So they don't want to make a type one error. That's fine. Um, let's check our assumptions. We are in mean land. All right. So let's go through this. All right. So did I have a random sample? If we go and look back through our wording, it wasn't stated, which is fine. We just need to note that. So my random sample, not stated. Now, for normality, the big one, there's three ways to get normality in mean land. It's either that the population distribution is stated to be normal, your sample size is 30 or higher, or you have some raw data and you make a, a graph and check out if it's roughly symmetric. And in this particular case, if you were to read through, oops, I shouldn't have erased that. If you were to read through all of this stuff, normal wasn't stated, okay? So that, that one's out, but my sample size is 49, which is greater than or equal to 30. So the central limit theorem's kicked in. And then my sample standard deviation was given to me. It was 1.2 years. So I'm through the deal breaker assumption and I'm, I'm able to move on. All right, oops. Oh, there, see now it popped back up there. You can kind of see, um, I, I did put them right here. There were the assumptions for mean land. 
Uh, I'm not quite sure what's happening on my Notability app, but oh well. Um, so state uh, step six, I'm gonna state the distribution because I'm in mainland, I'm gonna use the T distribution rather than the standard normal curve. Again, it's just, it's got a slightly lower peak, slightly higher tails. Um, so state seven, uh, the name of the test, we're gonna do a one sample mean T test. All right, and then for step eight, let's see, I have, uh, if my sample size is 49, I have 48 degrees of freedom. All right, and then we're gonna get to the, the actual number crunching. So for my test statistic, whenever you're in mean land, your test statistic is always X bar minus mu in ratio to your standard error off of your sampling distribution. So in this case, my sample mean, they told me was 5.1. And if you're not recalling where I got that from, it's stated right up here. All right, and then my, my null, the, the mean that I'm assuming to be true according to that news article was 4.5. And then we're gonna do 1.2 over the square root of 49. Now for me personally, this is where I would, I would head directly over to my calculator and get 10 and 11 right now. So I like to run my calculator stuff and then I can go and sketch it if I want. But let me go ahead and head over to my calculator and I'm gonna do the app version. So let me go find that, here it is. Let me clear this out. So we're gonna do stat, we're gonna to go to tests and I'm gonna head down to t-test and let me find, oh, it's option two. All right, so here we go. So my, my null hypothesis mean was 4.5. My sample mean was 5.1. My sample standard deviation was 1.2 and my sample size was 49. Now I had a greater than alternate, so I'm gonna do that. And then you can go and you can see everything in this step. So you see that my test statistic is 3.5. My p-value, is it's not 5.07 or 5.08. Don't forget that e to the negative four there. It's actually basically zero. And then in the app version of the calculator, it gives you the graph right away. And you can see that there is zero area under that curve. So that is quite literally up here. I have steps, well, I can't highlight it. The calculator won't let me. I have steps uh, 10, 11, and 12. So I'm gonna go copy those over to my write-up. All right, so this was, and this is now technically step 10. This was 3.5. All right, let's head over here, my p-value. Now we know it was zero, but if you wanted to write it out um, as a probability statement, it would technically be the probability that t in this case was greater than 3.5. So let me talk about where I'm getting these. So the T comes from the fact that we're on the T distribution. The greater than comes from the fact that my alternate was greater than, and 3.5 comes from, oops, sorry about that, step 10. So that's where those three numbers are, or those symbols are coming from. And if I wanted to play this out, I could have done TCDF. I could have gone low, high, and then degrees of freedom and that still would have given me zero. All right. And then we knew that if we were to draw our sampling, our T distribution, right, I would have a T here, I would have a zero here, and you can imagine, right, this would be about one, two, three, so 3.5 would be all the way over here. I can even try and extend that out. And if I tried to shade that area, it would basically be zero. All right, so then we have to make our decision. So in this case, uh, our p-value is actually less than alpha. So because our p-value is less than alpha, we're gonna reject h naught. Because what this is saying is, if it's true that it really took, let me change highlighter colors, it really, if, if it was true, if the null was actually true, that it really took four and a half years to complete a degree at the CSU system, the likelihood that we would get a sample of 49 students taking 5.1 years just by chance, like what's the chance that would happen if the null was true, just because when you when you survey students, something has to happen. Well, the likelihood of getting a sample mean of 5.1, if on the condition that the true mean was really 4.5, that would never happen just by chance. So this event here, and again, I'll change colors. This 5.1 is so rare if the null was true that it's actually evidence against the null. It's time to say like, hey, 
the article, uh, the San Jose Mercury article, it's probably not correct with that 4.5. We have some significant evidence against that. So because our p-value is less than alpha, we reject H0. There is sufficient evidence for the alternate. And for the alternate, I'm going to go ahead and just look at it. The alternate says mu greater than 4.5. So we have significant evidence that the true average time spent to complete an undergrad degree in the CSU system is greater than four and a half years. So let me write that out. There's sufficient evidence that the true average time spent to complete an undergrad degree In, oops, that's not in. In the CSU system is greater than four and a half years. And there is a fun little hypothesis test write up. I can kind of scrunch this in and we can take a look at it, but there is the nuts and bolts of a 13 step, oops, let me scrunch a little more, 13 step hypothesis test. Right up. All right. Thanks so much.